Let's move on to Cork against Dublin. What did you make of this? I was down at the game. I, I presume you were just watching from home, were you? Yeah, I didn't make much of it, Shane. This was the this was the most uncompetitive All Ireland quarter final I've ever seen. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe the the space that was been afforded lads in the ball. A fair play to to Conor Burke. He picked up his his four four points from play or whatever. But Jesus, like I couldn't believe the the lack of contact at different times. Now, there was contact in the inside line. I thought Dublin got a hell of a lot of contact on the Cork forward full forward line, shall we say? But part of the pitch for it was a non contact game. I was I I couldn't believe what I was looking at to be honest with you. You were there. You have, like, did, did it have uh, a training game feel to it? It, it kind of did. But, you know, and John Conlon made this comment when he was talking to some, maybe the Clare PRO because they had it up on the Clare official X channel. And he was talking about how sometimes when there's four teams involved at the quarterfinal, it can, it can really lack an atmosphere. And I would say it definitely lacked an atmosphere. Obviously, there, there's big issues here in terms of the atmosphere. Number one, the Wexford fail a clash. Number two, in Dublin, there's a round of club football going on at half six that evening. So, ah, I mean, you're really, snookered completely, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, realistically, like if you're playing at half six that evening, are you going to go down for a quarter past one game and then get the train back up and then be right to play a match? You're not. Realistically, you're not. Because, you know, and then obviously, look, the other game was a bit of a washout once the red card happened. And, you know, we'll come to all of that stuff later on. But I, do you know what I, my read on this was? It was much closer than the scoreline suggested. So it finished up five points in it. Midway through the second half, uh, let's see exactly when. But yeah, on the 58th minute, it was 23 points to 13. Sorry, 40. So the game was done, more or less, at that stage. It was a case of riding it out. But there was a lot of stages in that second half where there was like six and seven points in it. And is the game over at six or seven points? I mean, you've an uphill battle, but it's not over. And Dublin got goal chance after goal chance. Ronan Hayes really should have stitched his. That was in the 69th yeah. minute. A ball had broken out from Danny Sutcliffe. He had a chance around the 21. And look, his confidence just isn't where it needs to be at the moment. And maybe having that injury blow during the league didn't help him. I remember he started against Tip and had to come off. You knew he wasn't right from the get-go. Dermot O'Dooling had shots. Donald Burke had attempts and a very tame free, actually, from the 21 at one stage. And I was there thinking, right, this is back to six points. It's back to five points now. But there's nobody here to make it feel like there's actually an exciting finale here. It's like there was a pocket of people up on the town end trying to get come on, your boys in blue going. But other than that, it felt like there was nobody else from Dublin there. Now, there probably was a few scattered around. But if there was four or 5,000 dubs there and they got within five or six with like, you know, five minutes plus injury time to go, surely the place just comes alive then. But, like, the Cork fans were bored. It was sort of like Gladiator, are you not entertained by... You know, they, they started to take off some of their key lads. They started to maybe fall asleep to some degree. So you had one side bored with what they were watching, and then the other team were making a bit of a comeback. To be fair, the Dublin lads were dying with their boots on. But they had nobody to lift them or make it seem like this game could be tight all of a sudden. Now, maybe just because I'd like to see the Dubs doing well, maybe I'm exaggerating that, but that's how it felt to me. I was like... Jeez, if, if Ronan Hayes had to stitch that, there's three points between them and there's another four minutes to go. Do you know? So anything could have happened. But it just never felt like that because there was no one there to, to tell you that. Yeah, and just on that, and you've mentioned the goal chances that they had. Like, had their free take been on point from the start as well? And Sean Curry was very good in the freeze. Mm. Um, but had it been on point from the start, they were well in it. Like, Dublin, uh, I think Dublin had the good, you probably have it there. Was it 43 scoring chances they had? I had it down that they had 42 and that Cork had 41. Like, Jesus. Um, if they'd been up at 70%, they would have been very, very close to winning the game, re realistically. They left a lot of scores, a lot of scores behind. It would have also left them in a position where they wouldn't have been maybe trying to force goals at the end and there would have been only maybe two or three in it or something like that. But um, yeah, like, I would say Dublin saved you know a fair bit of face from the Leinster final anyway and it was a much it was a much better performance a couple of instances in the game I have to talk about O'Donnell's block on Horgan at the start was absolutely outrageous you're literally just waiting for the neck to bulge like he, did the he, brilliant Hoggy did Hoggy get spooked this moment like he, I'm sorry he have had, but... in two minds he didn't know whether to, to turn and smack it or to bat it and then O'Donnell is coming on him and obviously O'Donnell's is as quick as they come like so he got caught in two minds a little bit. Maybe a small bit. Now, I don't know the last time I've seen one of those batted 
versions of a shot blocked either, to be honest with you, because it's it is it's unconvention and it's not something where you just put your hurl in and you can see where the ball is or whatever. But um that you too far and, out to be trying it though. You know, I mean Shane Dowling aside, you don't really bat a shot from that's from that's probably that's probably true. Um like with the speed of his wrist and the quickness of him, if he'd just taken a conventional shot, uh, particularly off his right hand side open and mm. put it to the right hand side, it would have been in the net. But um Sean Brennan's save from Dalton as well was outrageous. Like it was like a savage save. And listen, I know this age should always hit it to the ground, but the save always looks better. It's like a you know what I mean? And Brennan pulled that. It was like Horgan save in the 20 final. It's full stretch, like at full stretch, like an outrageous save. There's a couple of bits of skill like that thrown in throughout the game, but like I'd be I'd be straight with you, like. Overall, now I thought it was a, a drab enough affair. On for, like unfortunately, because that was like the fifth and fourth last game of the year, and you're hoping they'll catch light and be really, really competitive, really cutthroat. But it never really happened in either of them. Been honest. But how much of it do you think was down to the lack of an atmosphere of the the Clare supporter or the Cork supporters switching off, and the Dublin supporters just well, they just didn't have a presence there. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a bit in that. Like you do, you, like what do uh. Or the Offaly Twenties always saying about the sixteenth man and all this kind of thing, like and you know there was there was just it seemed like and you were on the ground, you were in the grounds. It just seemed like there was very few there to get anything going. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd have you'd, you'd rouse up more noise at some at some club games than what we saw what we saw the other day. And particularly if there were, as you say, if there was a big a big enough cohort here and most of the rest of them were spread out. It kind of just gets lost, really. Whereas if they were all together in one area, at least you're hearing a good bit, a good whack of noise coming from that spot, and you might get some motivation for it or whatever. But that's kind of the, that's kind of the nature of it, the timing of it. Like the amount of people that would have had, would say, kids' games going on that morning, or other things, because other things organised for like during the day on a Saturday. I don't know about you, but that's Saturday's my day to get a few bits done that you can't get done during the week because you're too busy or whatever, or it's lawns or whatever it is. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people are in the same boat. And there's Euros around telly all day. And fair enough, Ireland aren't playing, but people are like, ah, sure, look, I'll just sit at home and watch the Euros or I'll have one going on GA Go on or whatever channel it was on. To be honest, I, I sort of switch off what channel was the thing on because they're generally at these no, games. But. They were both on they were both on RT and all the football. The football was scheduled kind of mad enough. You'd one at four, one at five, one at half, six. So the only one that you really would have been able to see solely that game would have been the last game, which in fairness turned out to be the best game in Derry Mayo too. Yeah, very frustrating the way these things are um, scheduled. But just back to Dublin, right? I was looking at the team they named, and I think they'd named the same team from the Leinster final. Yeah. But when it came down to it then, they brought in Dara Gray for Paddy Doyle at wing back. And the three, the inside forward line was actually all Crokes, Whiteley, Purcell and Ronan Hayes. And they brought in Dara Power, who played wing forward, Paul Crummy and Mark Rogan, who played out around the middle zone. And Sean Curry moved in sight. So to me, it just said Michal who said, Right, I tried. I tried to hurl against Kilkenny. It didn't quite work for us. And you know, you can speculate why it didn't work. Did they stand off Kilkenny? Did they? I don't know. Just not get in their face enough. But they clearly went for a more muscular approach here. Like Dara Gray on Declan Dalton, it makes more sense than yeah. you know. And Paddy Doyle is an excellent hurler, and it didn't quite happen for him when he came in either. But he's a brilliant prospect. Hence why I had him down last year as you know a, a, um, a coming player. But they went for that approach. And to be fair, to some degree, it worked. And then you look at the matchups that Dunhu had at the back, which was Alan Connolly being picked up by O'Donnell and Paddy Smith on Brian Hayes. Worked great. And John ben Bellew did quite well against Paddy yeah, Smith. Bellew did a good home. job on Horgan as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and these, these were the sort of matchups that we had predicted last Thursday. And Dublin got them all right. Yeah, no, they did, in fairness. Um, I was chatting to Connell Keeney on Wednesday just for a piece last Saturday. And he just kind of. I could hear his frustration in just that Kilkenny had too much time on the ball. Sometimes hurling can be kind of funny, right? There's the a certain amount of, um, you know, real nice kind of stick work and drills you do in training. You're working on your striking and that. But a, a lot of it, like there's a lovely blend of that. And it, Canark must have it absolutely nailed. There's a lovely blend of that and just raw ignorance and contact, 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 contact. And I think Dublin picked a team the other day, more so um, of lads that were really going to get stuck in. Maybe 
maybe not as good ball players, maybe all over the pitch, but they had a fair idea that they were going to get stuck in phys- physicality wise. Um, it's finding that blend of lads that really get stuck in, and then it's one thing getting stuck in, but when you have the ball, can you make a talk when you have the ball as well? But I, I kind of think sometimes we go away from like at the end of the day, hurling is a kind of a raw, ignorant game, it's blending that mix with the skill. That's the perfect part of it. Like the best hurler in the country is not the dandiest hurler. The best hurler in the country is a real skillful hurler who can win his own ball and get stuck gets stuck in. Do you know what I mean? Like and it's kind of finding that kind of blend. And I thought Dublin went more towards the okay, we know what we're gonna get out of X, Y, and Z. Is is Paul Crummy the the tastiest hurler, shall we say? No, he's not, but he can be goddamn effective if played the right way. Say as we saw against Clare in the All Ireland quarter final last year. Now it didn't totally work for him the other day, but they went with that approach more so than the ball players and running through the lines maybe that they've been going through up until this point. Yeah, and uh, you look at some of the misses they had in the first half, and Donald Burke's brilliant. Don't get us wrong, but. It- it clearly wasn't his day, and he, he popped a couple from play, and he, he scored a free late on from close range. But very first minute, he missed a free from 60 yards out, central position. Then you go up to like the second or third minute, and Owen O'Donnell mishit one. He, he'd made a nice burst up the centre, but didn't get a clean connection. Um, the 14th minute, Mark Rogan had a wide that he'd expect to score. Donald Burke then centrally from his own 65, a free a miss. Connor Burke with a, a miss at the end of a nice move, and Connor Burke was very good. Uh, a move that involved Conor Donoghue and Chris Crummy, then Donald Burke at midfield, a free centrally. Like he must have been praying for one for the from the twenty one at that stage. Yeah. And then Conor Burke, who ended ended up with was a three four actually. He had another wide before half time. So it was just the it was just the execution at the top end of the pitch. It just wasn't happening. And we've seen throughout this year the ball just isn't sticking in the inside line quite enough. I did think Sean Curry had a very good day. He scored was a three from play, and he knocked over a few frees. So at least Donahue can go away from it and be like, right, well, maybe Curry is now my answer on the inside line. And yeah, I have to work with some of these players, try to you know, figure out how do I get Ronan Hayes back up to top gear. And there's still a bit of way, but it's not all a disaster. It just, it does kind of feel like it, but I don't think it is. No, it would have been a disaster had they been beaten by 10 or 12 and it been yeah. a kind of a limp enough display like it was in the Leinster final. I think there was... There, there's a lot signs that there's a lot more to work with now than maybe you saw in the Leinster final. Listen, they were never as bad. They were never going to be as bad as they were in the Leinster final. Maybe they weren't going to be as good as we saw in in Saul Till either. It's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, but it's a it's a much better way. Like they'll finish the season now and there'll be regrets, regrets some regrets on what they missed. And I think that's always a that's always a much better way to finish the season where you're thinking. If we had, like, like as we were saying there, if they got the 70% conversion rate, what would have happened then? We would have been right in the game. If Donald Burke had been on the freeze, we would have been like really, really in the game. Maybe we would have been leading coming down the stretch. So um, it's a, it is definitely, a, it's it's nothing, like, it's never a good way to finish the season, but that's that's a better way than had they been beaten double digits two games in a row, it would have been a woeful flat way to finish the season. Yeah. 